Welcome to Common Sense Investing. My name is Cameron, and right now this is the slide that is supposed to be representing history. Gray Wolf Animal Health is not a stock with a lot of history. It's a brand new stock to the stock market. I'll show you a few dates. They released earnings lately. I want to talk a little bit about the history of the stock, Gray Wolf Animal Health. I want to talk a little bit about the earnings, and then I want to talk a little bit about the share price. So thank you for joining me. I'm actually doing this at lunchtime just for a little bit of fun and something to do. Now, fascinatingly, like this started for me back on three high growth penny stocks with potential. This was February 26, 2024. I had a fun live stream where I basically introduced three new stocks to my channel. And the reason is I typically try to introduce one new stock per week to my channel. I try to cover 52 new stocks every year and I was getting a little bit behind. So in this one video, I introduced One Soft Solutions, Grey Wolf Animal Health, and BQE Water. Now it's interesting, you know, talk about diversification here, because you introduced three stocks, right? I had all started my research on these companies. I had not completed my research on these companies. And when you diversify, it's fascinating what happens, because out of the three, BQE Water has gone up massively. I covered it at $33 Canadian. It's now up to $50 Canadian. It did go up to $55 once. It's actually on a pullback right now. One Soft Solutions has basically been consolidating around that $80, $81. I think it's at $0.82 cents today. This company still has a ton of potential, but it's sitting at that $0.80 cent share price as people decide what to do with it. Grey Wolf Animal Health, unfortunately, has been the, the laggard here, right? When I covered this stock, it was at $0.94 cents Canadian. And keep in mind with some of these slides, this is not, and this video is not financial advice in any way, shape, or form. You need to also do your own research when we're looking at these stocks because when I introduce a stock like this and I'm making a video and it takes me, you know, two, three, four, five days sometimes to research a company and then two, three, four, five days to record and put out a video on a company like this, I can't time the market. I'm not a day trader looking at it every day and trying to release my video at the cheapest price. I do not do buy, sell, or hold alerts. So it's interesting that my introductory video was sitting at 94. I think it was at 90 cents and it was previously at 94 cents. And that was a little peak. And I showed on that video how it kind of peaked up and down during that time. But yeah, it's interesting that out of these three stocks, you know, Grey Wolf Animal Health has been doing the worst. One Soft Solutions kind of running in place, but still has tons of potential. And BQE Water, wow. And BQE Water, I believe, has earnings coming out this week that I'm going to need to cover. This is a stock that could continue to surge, right? Really nice slide. I really enjoy this. Grey Wolf Animal Health is the stock that I'm talking about today. I covered a whole bunch of stuff for them from their investor presentation in November of 2023 when I made my video on them. Some of the numbers that we were looking at that I would like kind of answered today are... You know, where does this go? Because previously we're looking at they had a market cap of $27 million. They had revenue of $24.7 million. They had previously reported 12%, 12%, 12.4% quarterly revenue growth. They had cash of $7.9 million and they had debt of $10.2 million. So we'd like to see their cash go up. We'd like to see their debt go down. And we'd like to see them continue on that quarterly revenue growth of 12% or higher. Now, a little bit about what they do. They basically have two streams of income. So this is a, well, animal health, of course, company, right? And uh, they have both pharmaceutical portfolio and a non-pharmaceutical portfolio here. So they have drugs and approved prescriptions for animal health, as well as they have things like one of the things that I looked at for Grey Wolf Animal Health was um, instead of the big cone on animals after they get neutered or spayed, they had a, a shirt that was like a compressive shirt to keep the animal from, you know, irritating their operation. I thought that was really innovative. They have some pretty innovative products here. And if the growth is going to come for them from this company, it's probably through these products. So when we look at their numbers and we talk about growth, you can actually go see, go online and find some of their products that they're getting approved for sale here in Canada. And that product line seems to be growing as time goes on. 
why they wanted you to invest in them was this. So historically resilient industry, the animal care industry, they completed two acquisitions before they went public. They have strong organic growth, which is, you know, double digits is what they're talking about. Solid financial position to drive growth. And a lot of that in my last video, I went to be proved true because you could see here, like the Canadian household pet spending grew at a 17 year, 17 year CAGR of 6.9%. Of course, the pandemic sent that through the roof. Now, some of my previous, you know, red flags, green flags with Grey Wolf Animal Health was this is a company that really did right, is that they were cash positive, well managed in a good industry. They were getting notice, potential growth through both, both products and acquisitions. But really, they waited until they were cash positive and profitable or close to profitable until they became a publicly traded stock. And I wish more and more companies would do that, right? This wasn't a pre-revenue speculative stock when it joined the stock market. They are already, even though they're a small Canadian company, they're cash positive. Now, some of the red flags I had was some debt holding back near-term near growth. They have good growth, not great growth. And then my apologies, I'm actually blocking out that last bit, is there's some volatility in their share price. They are looking for new investors because they are a new company. Their share price can go up and down quite a bit as you know, all investors to this company are new investors because they've only been on the stock market for about a year. So that's a little bit of the history of Grey Wolf Animal Health. Let's get into their numbers a little bit because I have to do this. This has to be a bit boring because I've been covering earnings calls, conference calls, earnings for one soft solutions. I think was, you know, a nice slideshow presentation. Another company had like a 15 minute conference call. Grey Wolf Animal Health does not have that yet. They only have their management discussion and analysis and their numbers. There's no conference call or anything that we could go to and look at. So we have to look at the numbers. And of course, whenever I can, if I try to use the Wolf of Oakville to try to get me a second opinion, to try to get you a second opinion. So I'll give my opinion on Grey Wolf Animal Health, but also the Wolf of Oakville at thewolfofoakville.com. Cover Grey Wolf Animal Health as well. Giving this earnings three stars out of five. This was a downgrade from previously. He had given them three and a half stars out of five. So based on this earnings, the Wolf of Oakville downgraded them. Still three isn't bad, but it's a downgrade for Grey Wolf Animal Health. And I'll kind of look at why. And this is what I've been talking about. This is why everything that we look at, both the Wolf of Oakville and myself through this video, has to be taken with a little bit of a grain of salt. Because at the end of the day, this company was incorporated February 9th, 2021 as Megan Ventures. And then on November 15, 2022, it qualified and went on to the stock market, basically, right? Like they merged with the company. It wasn't until November 2023, November 23rd, 2022, that they started trading on the TSX Venture. So brand new company. This is not a company. Some of the ones that have been covering that have been around like NTG Clarity has been around for like 25 years or something like that. This is not the case. Grey Wolf Animal Health and their journey into prescription pharmaceuticals for animal health and animal health products in Canada is a new thing for them. So it's really hard to look back. We don't have a lot of data. We've got some 2022 numbers, but they all have to be taken for with a grain of salt and there's no 2021 numbers, right? So we have to be very careful when looking at these numbers. Now, quarterly financial information from these earnings. And if you're watching this video, you're probably thinking, well, why is the share price going down? I'm going to start here. And this isn't where their earnings start, but this is where I need to start. One of the main things is, since Q2, declining revenue, right? So the revenue went from 6.6 .6 million to 6.5 million to 6.1 million. So they've had a very good year. This is their first year on the venture exchange, right? They started in about November of 2022. So right in here when they went on the venture exchange and they've put in a fantastic year. However, there is some concerns when we're looking at penny stocks, microcap stocks, we're looking for growth. We're looking for that double digit growth that they promised. And at least from quarter to quarter, we're seeing that decline. Now, the gross profit percentage is down a little bit as well, going from 52.5% down to 49.8%. I'm not as worried about that, and I'll talk about why in a minute. 
And then finally, when we get to total operating expenses here, it's up. So you have, you know, we've got 2.7 million, 2.6 million, 2.6 million. So it was pretty stable here. And then all of a sudden, their expenses in Q4, unexpectedly for me anyway, are up to 3.2 million. So you have kind of the perfect storm here where you've got declining revenue quarter, quarter to quarter, and then you've got increasing expenses in Q4. Q4 was really a difficult quarter for this company. They had an operating loss of $160,000. So all year since they've been on the TSX venture, they've been a positive operating income company going all the way up to $649,000 of positive income here in Q2. And Q4, they're reporting a loss of $160,000. They haven't done that since before they were actually listed and they were just building the company back here in 2022. So that's kind of why and what's going on. Complete turnaround here, share price in Q4, going from positive one cents per share to negative one cents per share. And of course your EBITDA and adjusted EBITDA took a hit. So again, volatile company, new company, Q4, for me anyway, was a bit unexpected. It was a very struggling quarter. And unfortunately, because Q4 was bad, it did kind of drag down the rest of the year, which was extremely productive in my opinion. I think for a first year on the stock market, they did exceptionally well. They just hit some struggles here in Q4. Now, what we need some answers for from the company kind of is what's next, what's normal? Are we going to see more of this and more improvement? Was Q4 just kind of one off? We're going to look at that. Or is this, you know, inflation catching up with them? Is this interest rates on their debt catching up with them? That's kind of the question that we're looking at here with earnings is trying to figure out what's next. So this is the three month period here. One of the things to notice in Q4 again, just struggle after struggle in Q4. Revenue increased by 11.4%. So over the year, I think we were looking at what, 12.3%, close to 13%. So that revenue was down in Q4. Gross profits were 49%. We talked about that. Now cash though, they completed the quarter with cash of 7.8 7 million and increase of 0 0.9 million. So again, cash positive company, even in these challenging times. Now they do have the two business units, animal health and pharmacy. So the pharmacy unit, and that's why the margins are coming down a little bit, okay? So the pharmacy unit grew by 19.8%, so it did pretty good, but their margins are only about 45 to 43%. So if the company sees the pharmacy units grow, then you're going to see margins come down a little bit, but they're not going to crash, right? They're going to go from 50 to 45, something like that, somewhere in between 45 and 50% margins instead of 50 to 55, but it's not a bad thing. It's simply because the pharmacy unit is growing. Animal health, of course, only grew an increase here in the quarter of 4%. Their gross profit though, they're the higher margin business. So that's 54 to 57%. So this is growing, animal health is growing slower, at least in this quarter, than the pharmacy unit. When we go year over year, we're seeing some of the same things, right? So again, the year over year, 12.3%, for the year their revenue grew higher than the quarter, just showing how you know struggling Q4 was. Adjusted EBITDA was 3.6 million compared to 3.5 for the same period in 2022. But again, that's really hard to compare, compare right? So animal health, again, for the year, up 8%. That's their high margin business. The pharmacy business is the one that's growing, up 16.3%, and that's their lower margin business. It'd be nice to see a lot more of these numbers on both sides, right? Now, is that possible with such a small growing company that's new and just trying to figure some things out? Potentially, right? Not saying it can't happen. But I mean, well-managed money company, that's why I like the Wolf of Oakville. It's even though share price is down, you know, the Wolf gives them three stars. You look at this, their total assets are still going up, not a lot, and their to total liabilities are still going down. So even in a tough quarter, even in a brand new year, first year to the stock market, I mean, absolutely fantastic a year like this. And I wish, you know, and I, I give them praise all the time. I wish more companies would do this wait until they're they're profitable have a business plan that's profitable where they actually have a first year on the stock market and they have an operating income 
It is absolutely fantastic. And they're still moving in the right direction, just kind of slowly, right? Adjusted EBITDA, some numbers here that we could look at. So what happened in Q4? Well, there was a couple things. Now, one of the things I'm not sure about is how much inflation is hitting the company. So obviously, right, they have a net loss here. After reporting, we, we can't even look at this 5.7. That was a one-off item. That's how come that was so high. So we can't even look at the net loss. You almost can't even look at 2022 here. It doesn't really count. But when you look at the numbers, they did have a one-time settlement cost and I believe that was with one of their staff members. So that hurts a small growing company a lot. $408,000 of a one-time settlement cost. So Q1, gone. Next year, 2024, gone. At least we can assume this one is gone. I don't know if there's any going to be any more settlement costs in the future, but I doubt it. But this is a one-time cost. So when we look at some of these things, when we look at their EBITDA, I mean, nothing looks out of place. I mean, their interest on their debt, that seems manageable. Depreciation, depreciation of right use, amortization, everything looks fine. I can't really tell if they're getting hit by inflation here. Is that why some of the margins were down? Or was it just their product compilation? Maybe a little bit of both. But I do know that that settlement cost is really what hurt this company here in Q4 and what dragged down 2023, unfortunately. Again, though, it's not all bad. Closing cash balance increased by $0.9 million. They have $7.8 million of cash compared to $6.9 million. Their working capital, I believe, here is increasing. They had outstanding borrowings of $9.2 million. 1.1 million are current, 8.1 million are non-current. So they have paid some of that off. They do have a larger loan, but I don't think they're going to use it because it has really, 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 really nice interest, 4%. So when we look at their debt, 9.2 million, and you think that's a lot for a small company like this, they're only paying 4%. They really locked that in at a good time. So that's manageable. But it's only 4% up to 10 million. And then it's 10% if they go any higher than that. So the expectation is they just keep paying this off. I believe they're paying $120,000 per quarter off on this debt. Maybe they choose to pay that off a little bit quicker. I don't know what their plan is right now. But right now it's going down by roughly $1.1 million per year. And that is down from where was the previous slide here that I was looking at? That's one of the things we always have to look at. So previously when I was looking at them, they had 7.9 million cash, 10.2 million of debt, and now they're down significantly from that. So yeah, down to 9.2 million debt. So that's absolutely fantastic. Also the cash generated. Again, applause, applause, slow clap, slow clap, right? Operating activities, they generated cash at $2.4 million. So no dilution unless they want to pay off debt. They don't need dilution for cash. I do believe they have a few shares that they do pay out of share-based compensation. It's not a ton, but those are there. But you're not going to have a big offering from this company unless they're trying to pay off their debt. I don't know why they do that with 4% interest. So overall, there's probably going to be no big dilution activity for Grey Wolf Animal Health. Now, again, I'm not going to focus on these. I'm just going to put them here and you could pause if you want to look. One of the big reasons is this is just a short video on their earnings, but mostly I can't really look at their 2022 numbers. So it's hard for me to compare, you know, year over year here without having these numbers, these 2022 numbers to compare with. But you could look at the 2023 numbers if you want. I just pulled it up in case anybody wants to pause and take a little closer look. The main thing for me is Outlook. New company, right? It's been a volatile year. It's been a good year. Cash positive, $2.4 million in operations. They're getting double-digit revenue growth. Q4 sucked, let's be honest, right? One-time settlement caused a problem in Q4. Maybe a little bit of inflation. The pro Everything was working against them in Q4. It dragged down the year. I would want to know a little bit more about what's next about Grey Wolf Animal Health. Unfortunately, the outlook in their MDNA is a little bit a little bit brief. I read through this; it really doesn't tell me much. They don't have a conference call, 
So I'm hoping to get a little bit more explanation from the company. Maybe they put out a new investor deck. I'm not sure what they can do, but maybe a little bit more information from the company as far as Outlook, what they plan for the next couple of years for this company. And I think people are getting that because this week they are presenting at the Bloom Burton Conference, I believe in Toronto. And I think they're on Wednesday here. They're actually presenting the same day as Well Health Technologies. So I'm asking for a bit more clarification, a bit more, you know, outlook into this company. They're giving it to people, to investors this week anyway at Bloom Burton. If anybody's there, you get information about Grey Wolf Animal Health, feel free to share it with me or this channel or shareholders or anywhere else because we are looking for information on the future of this company based on these earnings that are a little bit up and down. So when we look again at the Wolf of Oakville giving them three out of five stars, the Wolf says here that while they had a good year overall in a lot of key areas, the recent trend for the past two quarters, particularly the most recent, is cause for some concern. Sadly, going to have to downgrade my fellow Wolf to three stars, put it back on the watch list until they report their Q1 next month. I'm pleased by my attempts to get in here that they failed, and that's what we're waiting for, right? I think at this point, we probably need a little bit of communication from the company and we need to sit back and wait and see. I will be fascinated to see what happens with Q1. Where is this company going to go? I know if you go look, they have some products coming online. I don't know exactly when those products are coming online. I don't know what the market for those products are. So it'd be interesting to hear from the company, but we should have a lot more information from them in Q1. Really, for me, this is a fascinating stock of looking at growth versus profit. You know, they come onto the market here. They're profitable. They're a profitable, profitable small cap. They really fit into this very well. It's the growth that we're worried about, right? They're talking about double digits. That's at least 10%, right? They were getting 12.3%. That was pretty attractive. And there was some questions about, can they go a little bit higher than 12.3% growth? And all of a sudden, instead of going up, they're probably going back down to that 10%. At least that's what it's looking right, right now. I hope that's wrong. I hope the company can convince us otherwise, right? But it's really making that choice between, you know, your investing preferences. Are you looking for that high growth stock that's a little bit more risky sometimes? Or are you looking for that nice balance sheet and the growth is just slow, steady, and stable? So... Those are my thoughts on Grey Wolf Animal Health. Hope everybody's doing okay. See if there's any questions here about Wolf.V. Many thanks for the episodes. No problem. I just thought I'd explain it. You know, when I look at that share price go from 94 cents to 90 cents to 88 cents, now I think they're down to 72 cents Canadian. New company, new stock very volatile i think it's people are worried about the growth where's the growth going to go next i think most people are smart enough investors to look at q4 and say okay that was a bit of a a one-off right especially that one time four hundred eight thousand dollar expense that's a problem right <laughs> but that's going to go away i think the question is where is this company going to go in the future it's a really nice company to look at good management team already profitable just what about growth? Where's growth going to go? I think that really is what this comes down to. So thanks for your time. I'm going to head back to work. I really appreciate it. I hope to talk to you again soon. Might have another live stream this evening.